we have this interesting video interesting interesting video that i wanted to highlight regarding this young lady and her experience with the one and the only the one and the only naomi campbell this person's name they're an influencer online african-based one called elisa majibo this video came out a while ago but i didn't really cover it so i want to cover it now so please forgive me if you've seen this already but she basically details her experience um meeting naomi campbell very early on her, in her career and how naomi campbell kind of blocked her kind of hated on her and kind of negatively affected her career when she was coming up in the scene so let's play this clip and you can see her you can hear her account of what happened and if you watch the video you also laugh at how much fucking oil how much moisturizer and how much stuff she applies to her body during the process of this video it's pretty funny i quite like it let's check it out so um in december 2021 no in december of 2020 naomi was coming to nairobi to do some shopping um she was on holiday but on a remote place so she was in nairobi doing shopping and i texted her and she told me she's in nairobi so i was so excited to meet her she was the first celebrity i was ever going to meet guys i was through the roof she texted me she texted me she was like hey i'm here so she texted me the location i went directly i went with my brother so my brother and i we met her we did some shopping and as we're shopping she's like oh you know the plane that's taking us back actually has a few couple more sets do you and your brother want to join us on holiday hell yes so i so i just i was like oh that would be so that would be so lovely but i texted my dad i said hey get the car ready i'm coming to the house we are going to the airport in an hour to meet naomi campbell so she can take me on vacation so we go on vacation we have like a nice we had like a very nice vacation naomi took care of me the whole entire time the whole entire time we were staying on the beach or doing this and then like this that eating just having fun you know what people do on vacation and this one time we were on the beach naomi was like oh you know we should do um a documentary a film about you living in kenya and i was like oh yeah that's fantastic she introduced me to a couple of people um in hollywood it was so lovely so a couple of people she was on vacation were coming to nairobi after the vacation they were staying at the kimpinski so i went to see them um at the kimpinski when the whole thing was over so i went i sat down with them i was talking to one of them and one of them was like oh it's so like how did you meet naomi and i was like oh no i texted her on instagram blah blah and she's like oh yeah she told us like she made you and she built you and she made your career and I was like, what? No, that's not what happened. She, and I was like, you mean like helped me and like promoted me? And he, she was like, no, like what you have is because of her. And I was like, oh yeah, no, that didn't happen. It is very important. You remember that part later. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So uh -oh. time goes by, time goes by. March, 2022. We have jumped into March, 2022. I get a phone call. Um, My phone is ringing. <laughs> Naomi Campbell. Oh, so um, I pick up. I'm like, hey, sis, like, how are you? How are you doing? And she's like, Elsa, how dare you? Oh, so I'm in shock, right? I'm in shock. I don't know what's going on. So I had just. So let me tell you what happened. The context of this um phone call. So I had just finished a doc, not just the previous year, I had done a documentary on my life, about my life, about bullying, about growing up with colorism, all these things about comedy, where I fell in love with comedy. So um, um, the film was debuting at Tribeca Film Festival and someone from Tribeca asked Naomi if she was coming and Naomi thought the film was the film she had suggested to me on the beach about me leaving Kenya. So I was like, no, 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 that's not what it's about. I tried explaining to her. And then she was like, I'll sue you for the rights of this movie. And you know I'll win, right? So I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm telling you, this is not, it's not about that. So I tell her, let me call you tomorrow. And she, she asked me like, why didn't you tell me when I told you at the beach? And I was like, you're Naomi Campbell. You know, like I was starstruck. Like I, like it took me very long to like process that moment. But, and I was like, I'll call you tomorrow. So the next day I had a flight. The flight I was taking from... Botswana to Ghana where I met that guy actually that's the time I was taking that flight so I was supposed to call her the next day but it was a 22 hour flight and in Ethiopia there was no service so I couldn't call her so I called her the day after immediately I landed in Ghana 
so she's the first person I called. I'm like, hey, um, hey, blah, blah. Like, are you free to talk? And she tells me, you were supposed to call me tomorrow. You you were supposed to call me yesterday. You didn't call me yesterday, which she was very right about. And she said, I have the Met Gala. And she was like, this is the last time I'm speaking to you. Have a nice life. And she hung up. Ooh. Which I was like, I was very saddened by the situation, right? But I was like, if that's how she truly feels, because I respect people's um space. So I was like, if that's how she truly feels, fine, it's okay. So I let it go. So uh, after that, like a few months, things started going very badly for me. Things started going haywire. And I didn't, I didn't think it was, I thought it was because of the situation. Let me not lie. But I was like, you know, also it can be sure. So I was like, let me go. Because also having someone like Naomi Campbell not liking you in the industry is not a good thing. So I went to her, I apologized, I apologized. I'd already apologized when the situation had happened. But I went and I apologized again and again. I started calling her, I started texting her. And then one day she just texted me and she was like, stop, stop trying to, stop calling me. I have a child to take care of. So <laughs> after that, I just said, okay, there's nothing I can do about no, it. I started drinking. That's why I even quit alcohol. I started Jesus drinking. Jesus Christ. Um, I became, I started drinking a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. And then... Because I wasn't sure why things were going so wrong and I couldn't put my finger on it And then a few months later, I met Edward Enifor at a party and Edward Enifor is one of Oh my goodness. He's one of the people I adore the most. So I was like, oh my goodness. That's Edward I have to go say hi. So I go I say I'm like, hey Edward. I'm such a big fan and he looks at me. He looks at me He's like, I know you. And then he said something that made me think the situation with Naomi was causing like some of the trials and tribulations I was currently going through. So I was like, you know what? I need to fix this. So I went to one of our mutual friends and I was like, hey, please, can you um, tell Naomi? Because I knew they were going on holiday together. So I was like, hey, can you please tell Naomi to text me? And she was like, yeah, I'll make sure and blah, blah. So a couple of days went by and then Naomi finally texted me and she was like, yeah, I let that go a long time ago. I'm not one to hold a grudge. She sent me a very lovely text. She said, happy new year. So after that, after that happened, this was the new year 2023. So after that happened, every single step I made, every single move I made, I told Naomi, every single thing I did, I told Naomi, I would... <laughs> breathe i tell naomi whether she would reply or not i would send her a message because i didn't want what happened to happen again and after some time after a few weeks i called my mom and i was like this isn't normal this doesn't feel healthy it feels it kind of feels you know it doesn't feel too nice it, it, there's nothing healthy or normal about this and i was like i don't want to be in a situation like this so after that, I just decided it is healthier for me to completely remove myself from the situation mm -hmm. and get myself out. And you remember earlier when I said my friends said, um, no, the the ones Naomi had introduced me to, when they said, oh, Naomi had made you. You remember when I said that? So I want to, I just want to um, acknowledge that and say that even through through all this right even through everything that happened first of all number one obviously i played a part in it because i am part of the story every in any situation you are in you play a part you play a role and i oh, have really? my role I and know. i apologize for my role and something else when she said she made me i'm not going to speak on that but i will say that naomi did give me a lot of credibility especially when i first entered the industry she gave mm -hmm. me a lot of credibility and that's not something that i can just say oh you know this happened and naomi blah, blah, blah. i can't say that she did hold hold me up high and she introduced me to a lot of people she made me feel special mm -hmm. she did a lot of things for me mm -hmm. so i wouldn't say she made me but she did play um a big role in a lot of the things that so in general just to kind of round this up because she's going on for a while here um it's an interesting story, I thought, to kind of cover because, in essence, she's talking about Naomi Campbell maybe playing a role in blocking some of her opportunities. She met Naomi Campbell really early in her career and the co-sign of Naomi Campbell, the introductions, the doors that she was able to open, was able to kind of give her a bit of a push in her, in her career early on. She was still doing her own thing, but obviously that co-sign kind of helped. And then one time she was hanging out. Oh, big up, Al. Appreciate you. 
Danu, 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 Danu. That's Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Big up out. Appreciate you, brother. So, um, I guess what she's basically trying to say is that at some point during that relationship, one of Nomi Campbell's friends or associates came up to her and said, oh shit, you're that girl that Nomi Campbell put on. You're that girl that she's responsible for actually that platforming and she gave you all these opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And I guess in that situation, what this proves is that this newer generation of kids or maybe this new crop of like social media stars and shit, because they're incredibly successful when they're really young and very quickly, they sometimes don't feel like they have to kiss the ring, play the political game or appease people or kiss ass the way that maybe my generation would have. I feel like if somebody that was maybe from my generation was in that similar situ situation, they would have definitely acquiesced and just lied and be like, oh my God, Nomi, she's amazing. She gave me everything. She actually gave me my first gig. She introduced me to my first agent. People from my generation would have probably gone overboard to make it very clear that yes, Nomi is responsible for it because you want to make a good impression on her friends and you always want to always kind of like make what's that i think it's a law in 48 power in 48 laws of power about never outshining the master right and always kind of being a little bit what's that word called always kind of making yourself smaller in their presence so when her name is mentioned instead of you standing up and thinking no i'm just as big as her because i feel like nowadays there are probably girls on tiktok probably girls on fucking instagram who probably think there are they are way bigger deals than Amy campbell there's probably some girls in fashion right now who are under 25 who probably don't even know who Naomi Campbell is. Legitimately. They have no idea who the fuck she is. So if they get a bit of fame, if they get a bit of hype, if people start to like them for who they are and what they present online, they could legitimately think, yeah, I'm bigger than Naomi Campbell. I don't need to acquiesce to her. I don't need to kiss her ring. I need to lick her ass. So if somebody ever come up to her and said, hey, Kate Moss made you. Naomi Campbell made you. They'd like be disgusted. Like, how dare you? I did this myself. I'm the one who took all the pictures. I was the one up late, you know, reordering my fucking feed, um, changing captions and shit. They would actually be in legitimately offended. But I think in that situation, you have to just play the game. You have to know when and when to kind of turn that thing on and off, even if you have the maximum amount of clout. Because I think what she's basically trying to say is that she was already on her way back then. She didn't really need Nobi Campbell. Nobi Campbell obviously helped to kind of, you know, um, grease some palms, open some doors, you know, just be somebody to stand the next cycle. I'm sure in fashion, in you know, entertainment industry, if you walk in a room with Nobi Campbell, you're going to be in a better place when you leave that room at the end of the night. We all know that to be true. But if you're already doing your own thing, maybe you don't want to be associated with her because you want to do your own thing. Or maybe you're not going to be fully kind of in her debt because you're doing your own thing. But I think in that situation, she should have just played her role and been very, what's that word called? And been very kind of um, clear, even if it was false, even if it was a lie, that yes, Naomi Campbell was responsible for her success and she was internally grateful and she's just eager to meet new people. And who knows, that one conversation would have led to other conversations that could have led to a deal. It's all kind of up in the air. Now, that doesn't excuse... Nobi Campbell's actions and how she kind of treated her being a grown-ass woman and treating a girl in her 20s like this and almost kind of bullying her in a way and humiliating her and making her grovel and beg for you for your forgiveness and call you a million times and go through intermediaries and all this sort of shit that's very lame for a grown-ass woman to do it's very lame I guess the only excuse for that would be Nobi Campbell is a model um she's in that fashion industry in that fashion industry people aren't really their born ages you know people kind of have a weird state of like arrested development so people probably stop kind of growing up or maturing maybe at the age of like 25 so maybe she actually feels like she's 27 Nobi Campbell so she feels like she can act like that with this girl because she doesn't actually see herself as like a 60 plus year old woman or whatever she is right so that might maybe explain um why she acted that way but obviously it's not an excuse but I think in this situation if that was me, I would have just acquiesced and just kind of, you know, licked her ass for the sake of it, just to keep the peace. But I do think this is a very unique situation for this new generation because there are kids coming up who are so famous. I think we saw already with the Kai Sinat v. Kanye beef. Kai Sinat got into a bit of a back and forth with Kanye because he got some Yeezy merch sent to him and it didn't fit right and he was upset about it. Kanye kind of, you know, called him out online and then um, 
Kai Senior clapped back at him. And then uh, Claudia's manager, this guy called Jobinopoly, got involved. And this Jobinopoly guy, from what he says and from the little research I've done on him, he's clearly like a big wig in the industry. He's allegedly the brother of Don C, who's associated with Kanye, old school Chicago promoter, A&R manager type dude. So he's very much, you know, a part of hip hop history in some sense. But you have to be a certain age to know who the fuck he is. Right, um, I didn't even know fucking Kanye had a manager in the first place. So the fact that he's got a manager and his name John Monopoly, I have no fucking idea. But there was a clear disconnect you could see on the phone call when they were talking because I think that John Monopoly guy was trying to flex on Kai Cena with his name and with his status. But Kai doesn't know him from a fucking lick of paint. And you even saw it very clearly when John Monopoly mentioned um, what you call it, Chris Lighty from Violator Recordings, right? Or Violator fucking A&R, the, that, you know, group that, that fucking um, 50 was signed to back in the day. And Kai Cena had no idea about Violator, had no idea about Chris Lighty, zero. He probably barely knows some 50 Cent tunes. So I think that goes to show that this new generation of kids are just so famous, so clouded up, that they don't actually need to kiss the ring. They don't actually need to appease the gatekeepers to actually get a career, to kind of get anywhere in the industry. And that does create some weird friction because I'm assuming the gatekeepers and the old heads want to be recognized and want to be seen as some people who have something, I don't know, whatever, from these young cats. But these young cats also don't see them as anything and don't really respect them, especially if they're going to come at them in that way. Um, but I do think there should be like a little balancing act in between to kind of make those things work. But um, I do love the fact that she's got this ongoing troll where she applies copious and when i mean copious i mean copious amounts of moisturizer body butter uh, body gel body shine like loads of i think that little roll on thing that she had applying on her shoulder i'd actually like to get that she had this kind of roll on thing she applied on the shoulders and she put it in the middle of her chest it kind of looked like some sort of like body sheen I'd actually like to wear that. I'm not going to lie. If I was going to a techno club and I had my little vest on, I'd actually like to have my arms out, like shiny fucking shining as I'm in a club. I actually didn't mind that. But I do think it's a bit of a troll. It might not be a troll. She might just actually like moisturizer because one of the good things I liked, if you looked at some of her bottles that she was pouring into her hands, there was some fucking moisturizer bottles that were legitimately look like they were about to finish. So she clearly does use moisturizer. It's very much into skincare. It's very much into, you know, her appearance and her fucking, she's even putting on mad amounts of fucking perfume and fragrance and shit. And she's doing a TikTok video. Do you know what I mean? We can't even smell her. And she's applying mad amounts of fucking, you know, fragrance and other toilet and shit. So I fucking love it. I really love it. Um, I think it's fucking amazing. Especially someone like myself. As you guys know from my streams, I love to look shiny. I fucking love looking shiny. I love looking like I'm dripping, like I'm wet. But sometimes it's a bad thing because I also sweat a lot. So it can sometimes mix in and it can create this really, you know, what's the thing called? Condensed, combustion-esque, um, you know, the side of a central line kind of vibe face going on. But I do like the fact that she has all that sheen going on, all that, all that fucking body butter and, you know oils and gels and body mist and shit because i think she had a bit of that because i think i saw some body mist there as well if you know you know about the body mist vibe out there so big up her um enjoy the fucking breakdown and i do think it's quite cool to see these young kids who are coming up in the industry and don't need these og and old heads to get forward but i do think there should be a kind of a balancing act that you play where you, you kiss the ring for the sake of peace in the middle east in that moment and also for the sake of just maybe getting you another free deal here and there and waxing someone's ego ego um and then there's also the in there's also the importance of like saying no this person was responsible for my success this person wasn't blah 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 but you know there is a balance that you can kind of do in the middle there to make that kind of work so big up her big up that young lady big up that young lady called Elisa, or sorry, Elsa Majibo, Elsa Majibo, appreciate her, appreciate her, um, yo, big up fashion road man, wild guan, hope you're good brother, oh yeah, she's a lotion girl, okay, cool, yeah, I like her man, I'm, I've actually got, I'm actually gonna start following her on TikTok, I don't actually use TikTok that much, but <coughs> I'm gonna start following her, um, that's her actual name, if you guys wanna follow her on TikTok, that's her name there, her name is Elsa Majibo, I'm assuming she's probably Kenyan or something, so she keeps, keeps talking about Kenya, but she's an uh, influencer, I guess, um, a comedian as well, from what I've been able to understand, and um, yeah, she put some fits out there as well, which I like, oh, she's actually on Twitter too, I'm pretty sure I follow her on Twitter, what am I talking about, she put some fits out on Twitter, her fits on Twitter, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like the majority of them, I think she usually looks like a mess, but because her body is T, as people like to say on social media, it kind of just looks great, I think she's a perfect example of sometimes why it's really important, 
as a person to sometimes focus on your body and your personal hygiene and how you just look in clothes as opposed to your wardrobe and your style and shit. Because I don't think her personal style is that great. She has a lot of misses in some of her looks, but because her body looks the way it does, it doesn't really matter. Do you know what I mean? It really doesn't. She can wear legitimately a plastic bag and it's going to look quote unquote good on her because her body is tea, as Drake would say. Her body is tea, as Drake would blood clot say.